Is it Lokito? You got something to say? He says, you are watching Linda, a.k.a. The Gamer Girl. Enjoy the video. Hey everybody, Linda, a.k.a. The Gamer Girl here, and we are going to talk about a movie that we think encaptures a video game and is not so cheesy corny that you go, oh my gosh, what am I watching? So I'll dive in and then we'll shoot over to Mark. So the first one for me that I thought about was Tomb Raider. But which one do I pick? I had the old one from 2000, 2001 and then I had the one from 2017-18. And it was a toss up. And I thought about it, and I'm gonna go for Tomb Raider 2018. Or, as one up a woman's family likes to call it, the reason why I picked this one was for a couple reasons. When I played this, I played it again just to confirm that the story was actually like this, and it is. It's, it's spot on, you watch it, you're liking it, and the one thing I like about it is it's not too over the top with the video game parts. You don't see them doing the cliche of, you know, like House of the Dead where they're doing the, the flashing of this and that and everything like that. It, it's literally what you get. You get the story, you get all of the characters, how they are in the video game because I have seen plenty of times where video game movies go rogue and they change a character up so badly so that it'll fit their narrative of what the director thought that the video game was going to be. And this one actually stuck to its guns. It said, you know, this was a great story. Why would I change it? Why would I turn anything completely different about the, you know, the game in general? When the reboot happened for both the video game and the movie, a lot of people were hmm, iffy about it. But to me, I like the reboot. I like to see where Tomb Raider came from. I like to see where she started her origins, and also, not everybody is a badass right off the gate. Some people are questioning whether they deserve to be where they are, or are they fit for the role that the family member has chosen for them. And I like that. I like to see where you, you, you see them question themselves and see that some people are thrusted into it and some people are easily manipulated into a role. But for her, she was basically tossed into the mix and told, you know, you're gonna die, you're gonna be shown, and... I like the fact that it's more than one group that's going crazy on you. It's not just, oh, it's, you know, one measly little group you gotta deal with. It's, no, it's several groups, and you have to figure out which one's more crazier than the other, and go for it. And the reason why I liked it even more than the first one is because... As much as this is a really good game, it's still not 100% perfect. There is still the cliche explosions for no reason. They try to hype up this game, and I understand that, you know, the gameplay, it's not for everybody. You get lost, you don't know where you're going. You're in a tomb. What do you do now? There's no hand-holding. So they had to beef it up. But they didn't really have to beef it up that much. So that is why I liked it. I also like the fact that they stuck with the characters' outfits. They didn't go to Hollywood where you saw, you know, scandalous stuff like that. And it, it's a badass lead. They picked a good character who actually looks like their character. That's another thing. I don't like when <laughs> I'm watching a movie and I'm like, wow, that's nothing like the person it was supposed to be in the books or the, the video game. That has happened a couple times. Uh, Witcher! Yeah, so. For me, I don't mind as long as the character is still good, but it throws me off a little bit to go, Oh, so that's who you're supposed to be. So you saw my pick for a movie. Now we're going to find out what Mark's chosen. Here we go. If you guys recognize those noises, then you probably know what I'm going to talk about. That's right, the Resident Evil games and the movies. To be specific, today I'm going to talk about Resident Evil Afterlife, the movie. I just watched it recently for the first time and I thought it was really good. You know, you got the Umbrella Corp working on secret virus and it gets loose. Then all of a sudden there's zombies everywhere. And then you have your main hero who has to clean up the mess. 
That's your basic plot to a Resident Evil movie. You know, kill a bunch of zombies. That's your basic Resident Evil story. I mean, boom, you got a perfect movie right there. Kill all the zombies, awesome action, guns a-blazing. This movie is great. Maybe it won't win any awards or anything, but if you're like me and you like a good, hard-hitting action picture, then this movie is for you. I mean, what more can you ask for? In the first 10 minutes, it's got this amazing action scene with the main character, Alice. I mean, whoa, Mama Alice. <laughs> Played by Mila Jovovich. You might recognize her from the movie The Fifth Element. She's pretty easy on the eyes, and she's played the main character in a lot of the Resident Evil movies, so I'm a big fan of hers. And she's just guns a-blazing, samurai swords a-flying, slicing people up, strong personality. It's great action for the start, and that's how you open an action movie. Then, in the first ten minutes, you meet Wesker, one of the main bad guys in the Resident Evil series in the games, and he's in this movie, too. So that's a cool connection to Resident Evil. So there were many Resident Evil films before this, but I thought I'd switch it up and talk about this film because I hadn't seen it before, and you might argue the earlier ones are better or something, but this one is pretty darn cool. As for... How it compares to the video games, well, it's pretty close. There's a bunch of zombies, you gotta survive, kill the zombies, and that's the main deal, you know, in all the video games. So, you know, if you've played any Resident Evil video games, they're all pretty similar in that way. And if you want to talk about uh, connections to real life, here we are in 2020, you know, the Rona on the loose. Sir? And we never really thought much about these Resident Evil games until now. And, I mean, we're living in, like, a real-life Resident Evil situation in 2020, although it's not quite that bad. But you can kind of see the possibility of something like this happening, you know. My favorite of the Resident Evil games would probably have to be Resident Evil 1. But then also I really like Resident Evil 4. That's probably my all-time favorite Resident Evil game. I mean, you guys know. I don't even have to go through the Resident Evil games with you. You guys know them all already. But, yeah, Resident Evil 4 on the Wii, to be specific, because I love the motion controls of the Wii, where you get to shoot the Wii mo like the gun. I think that's actually the best version of the game. So one thing that's done very well in both the games and this movie is this feeling of fear that you never know when a zombie could be lurking around the next corner and then all of a sudden, boom, they pop out and you gotta deal with the zombie. And that's kind of one of the main themes that makes the Resident Evil games and the movie so good. But this movie has a lot of connections to the games. Like, for example, it has Claire Redfield, you know, and she's another really cool hero from the Resident Evil games. And then you have a zombie-infected cruise ship. So that's another main staple in the Resident Evil. It does a great job of incorporating aspects from the different Resident Evil games. It even has Chris Redfield, another one of my favorite Resident Evil characters. So this movie has, like, almost all the characters from the different Resident Evil games. It's really neat. And it's got all the basic Resident Evil stuff. It's got the guns, the weapons, the coins... The big, extra big zombie bosses. This movie has everything from the games. It's a very faithful adaptation of the games. The cool thing about the Resident Evil zombies is they're threatening and scary, but they're just the right amount of dangerous. Like, for example, they're infectious, but you can still get close enough to chop them up with a sword and you don't even need to wear a mask. You know what I mean? And even if you did get bit by the zombies, as long as you have a green herb or some first aid spray, you'll be fine. So yeah, go watch this movie. Play yourself some Resident Evil games. Prepare for the next time zombies get on the loose. Okay, back to you, Linda. I've got some zombies to kill.
And that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for making it to the end. What are some of your picks for awesome video game movies? Let me know in the comments below. I'm going to drop a link in the description for Mark's channel. Check him out. He's an awesome YouTuber who has many, many things. Not just video games, but also about life in general, about his grandpa and the army. So definitely give him a sub. And I hope you all have a great day. Keep on gaming, everybody. Catch you next video. Bye. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games. Linda the Gamer Girl. She's here, she's playing games too.